Well, Nancy. Must say, you certainly don't look anything like you did a few minutes ago. I am a devil. Well, I guess that means that you and I have gone from being friends to being enemies. Linda Blair is back, once again being possessed by the devil, this time in 1990s Repossessed. This one is directed and written by Bob Logan, the writer-director of Meatballs 4. And this one stars, obviously, comedy legend Leslie Nielsen. You also have uh, Ned Beatty, and you have, our, kind of, um, I suppose, our central protagonist here, uh, Father Luke Brophy, played by Anthony Stark before we obviously he became uh, Iron Man, clearly. So this is almost like an unofficial sequel to The Exorcist. We see at the beginning of the movie there is a prologue where we see an exorcism taking place in the mid-70s and uh, obviously of a young girl and the, 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 the priest, played by uh, Leslie Nelson, exorcises the demon. And then we have a, you know, a few years later uh, a couple of decades later, the now adult female that was being exercised is now an adult played by Linda Blair. This ca character is called Nancy in this son. Obviously, think about Nancy and then Reagan, if you know what I mean, the character from uh, The Exorcist. You see what they've done there. And uh, she is once again possessed now as an adult by the devil. Uh, and it's up to a young priest, uh, Father Brophy, played by Anthony Stark, love it, uh, to try and, and uh, obviously exercise this demon. Nobody kind of really believes, first of all, what's going on, uh, until a tele-evangelist, played by Ned Beatty, convinces a church to do an exorcism, but only in the proviso that it could be televised, and obviously he reaped the benefits from it. And uh, they agree, and it's up to... Uh, Father Brophy to convince uh, Father Mayo, played by Leslie Nielsen, to come back out of retirement to help do this exorcism. Now, it sounds like a pretty good plot from a B movie, doesn't it? A sort of thing you would see in a kind of an, an legitimate exorcism movie. And obviously, the 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 the, uh, uh, the contrivance here, of course, is that the devil really wants to go on TV. That he's actually planning this all along. That was the idea. So, yeah, I've got to say, on the positive point, said it actually has a reasonable plot, believe it or not. Um, so maybe what else works with this movie? I think one of the key factors here is to have Linda Blair not reprising her role exactly, but sending up her role as Reagan from The Exorcist in a, in a kind of almost like uh, an alternate reality, so to speak. Obviously, she reappeared again in The Exorcist too, but um, it's almost like a, uh, you know, a, a, a what if she, it was in a, in a comedy dimension here. So it is fun, and it, kind of, it, it does obviously add some, uh, some flavour for those kind of horror fans who, wanna, who really enjoyed the exorcism, seeing obviously Linda Blair kind of go through the kind of the, uh, um, you know, the rigmarole again. And there are some funny callbacks, obviously, to specifically the exorcist. Uh, for example, we have a, uh, a scene where uh, Leslie Nielsen's character playing the priest eats loads of eggs and things like that, and then deliberately tries to make itself puke on uh, a possessed Reagan at this time, or a possessed Nancy, sorry, and then you can ha, now it's your turn, things like that. So there are some kind of, there's some callbacks to the exorcist itself. Joke-wise, uh, it's, it's hit and miss, as a lot of these kind of spoof movies are. Interestingly enough, I thought the jokes that worked seemed to be more in the first half of the movie, whilst the jokes in the, kind of the latter half, I felt, fell a bit, a bit flat for me. The jokes have a little bit of a over-reliance on you know, juvenile sight gags, to be fair. And that's true of a lot of these kind of spoof movies. I'm not a huge fan of spoof films, to be brutally honest with you. I have liked a couple, um, not another teen movie, and I didn't mind Dracula Dead and Loving It, if you want another Leslie Nielsen horror spoof. And this one is kind of, uh, you know, it, it has its moments, and there are a couple of things here. Interestingly, the, the, the film has a lot of pop culture references of the time. Obviously, 1990, the movie's 30 years old now, so a lot of these uh, jokes are going to fall flat if you are, you know, less than kind of 40, really, because you're simply not going to 
wouldn't have been a, around really to uh, to know what these jokes are referring to, for example. You know, celebrity jokes of the time, things like that. So in that respect, I feel maybe that it doesn't have a rewatchability factor for, you know, that sort of newer audience, so to speak, and really even people who are my age who maybe remember things like Sean, Sean, uh, Sean Penn being punchy and stuff like that, one of the jokes in this movie, for example. So, you know, it's, it's, it hasn't aged well in regards to some of its humour. And as I've mentioned, um, the, the humour, I don't know, it, it, it seems to be more misses than hits in the second half. I mean, there's, there's a big dance number at the end and it, it just falls a little bit flat. I think Leslie Nielsen is, is pretty fun in the role. He looks like he's, he's always game in these sort of films. But this is no... I don't think this is a really a, as memorable. There's no really funny gags in this movie that will just kind of think, you know, that you're going to have watch that clip on YouTube because it was so funny. Uh, there are some jokes that do make you chuckle, but there's no absolute howlers, if that makes sense. And actually, Leslie Nielsen isn't in the movie as much as I thought he was going to be. The actual central priest, so to speak, is... Uh, Father Brophy, and then we see sort of, uh, you know, clips of Leslie Nelson essentially doing a lecture in a, in a kind of a university or something, and then he'll kind of come into the story sort of towards the end. So he's not actually in it as much as you may think. Um, so overall, it's a mildly diverting comedy. It doesn't, it doesn't have, you know, a lot of the jokes here, and I think that's the thing, aren't really referencing horror movies as such. It's just cheap sight gags. For example, um, a doctor will say, I've got a couple of cases of flu coming in to, in the hospital, and then someone walks past with literally two cases saying flu on them. Things like that. Uh, so jokes that, you know, don't send up the horrid genre. There are a couple, but not as many. If you're setting up a particular genre, it would make sense to have jokes about maybe um, cliches and things of that genre and kind of tropes that you could kind of take the, take the miss out of. But it doesn't really do that. It just has general kind of juvenile humour, slapstick kind of like sight gags and pop culture references that no one knows about anymore. But it's, uh, it isn't unwatchable, I would say. I, I think there are kind of worse, um, you know, par parody films, even kind of worse horror parody films, if you're talking about some of the scary movie sequels, for example. But it's by no means a classic. I don't think this is uh, going to be only one's top ten comedies. Uh, so I'll give this one a 5 out of 10. Have you seen it? What do you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.